So, in the last few videos, you've learned some fundamental rules of functional programming and how they actually can prevent bugs. But they also have some limitations and issues, and we're going to look at some workarounds today. So, look at this piece of code, for example. Um, I think, you, you know, this is a very simple piece of code, so I think everyone knows this kind of structure. We've got a variable, and we want to give it a different value depending on some condition, alright? So, imagine that this isn't a hard-coded value, but actually a condition. And this is great, but the problem is that we're changing the value of this variable. So, we've got, we don't have immutable data. So, how can we write this piece of code but in functional programming. Well, what we, for example, could do is I'm just going to, you know, comment this out so that we can write a new piece of code. I'm going to say const results. So we don't want to have a let, but a const this time, obviously. And I'm going to set it equal to a conditional value. And we're going to use something called a ternary operator. And I think most of you will be familiar with this, but I'm just going to go through it quickly. All we're going to write is, first of all, the condition. And then I'm going to say, if that condition is true, with a question mark, I want to set it equal to, the condition is true, this is just a dummy sentence that I've just given this uh, result. And otherwise, the condition is false. And instead of having an if and an else, I'm just going to use a question mark and a colon. It does the exact same thing, it's just a lot shorter. So let's see if it actually works. It seems to work if it's true. And I'm going to say false. Um, and actually reload it, then we can actually see over here it's false. So perfect. So in this example, we've got another piece of code that would be illegal in functional programming. So what we've got over here is a start and an end, these are constants, and then we want to calculate uh, the sum of each single number between, or each whole number rather, between 0 and 100, so the start and end. And in this case, 0 is inclusive and 100 is exclusive. Otherwise, I would be using small equals. And every time, I'm just, I've just got this i, and I'm adding i to sum that starts with a 0. So let's see what the result is. So it's apparently it's 4,950, so it seems to be working. The problem is that we're actually changing some values. For example, the sum we're changing constantly, and that's the most important thing. Also, the for loop isn't really that great because we also have got, you know, this i which we're changing all the time. So probably in functional programming, it would be best to not even use the structure and use something completely different. But how are we going to do this? Well, I'm just going to remove this. In fact, I'm just going to remove everything for now. And in functional programming, every single process or every single piece of the program should be in a function. Or, you know, you, c you could group it up into a little function. So this could also just be a function, all right? So I'm going to create the function, I'm, and I'm going to call it sum. Okay, I'm going to set it equal to an arrow function, like this. And it's going to take in the start, which is a number, and the end, which is a number. And these are just these values on the top. Now, how are we going to do this without a for loop? Well, what we could, for example, do is just say we're going to return. Uh, so we'll have to analyze. We'll have to return, obviously, the value, the sum. Now, we have to analyze how are we doing it over here. We're starting with 0, and we're going all the way up to 99, because we're not including 100. So what we could do is we could just say is we're returning the start, which is, well, to begin with 0, and we'll add sum, which is the function, we're calling it in itself, and I'm going to explain that later on, with start plus 1 and the end again. So basically we're just saying we're calling it recursively, that's what we call it, we're calling it in of itself, which means it's going to be called over and over and over again. And what we're basically doing is we've got the start and we're adding it to whatever the result of this will be. And this time we're adding one to the start because obviously we want to you know go all the way up to 100, and we're also passing down the end again because the end is going to stay just like over here. Now let's see what happens if we save it. So I'm going to say console.log sum of zero and 100 like this. 
and we get an error and that's because it's calling itself over and over again without any end and after a while we'll get a stack overflow error which isn't good so we have to have some kind of limit and I'm gonna do this right now I'll say if start is triple equals to end so if they're the same value then we actually don't want to call the function again because then we know that start has reached the end and then I just want to return zero so let's see what happens now and as you can see we get the same result so this is something called recursion and I've actually got a complete video on it so if you're interested the link will be somewhere over here in the description and we're just using a function instead of a for loop to compute results and we're calling the function over and over again and we're adding everything to the sum and we're doing this completely without mutating data like over here and I think this is a really little elegant solution to um, you know this problem so that was it for this video so I'll see you in the next one bye